First of all, congratulations on this project. It is such a touching watch. It's so emotional. It's it's a joy to watch. Uh, I guess b before we get into more questions about uh, the story, where did this idea come from and why was this important for you to tell? This story is about friendship and I, I have a lot of wonderful friends and my sisters in my life who are also like my friends um, that always inspire me and challenge me. And, um, you know, even if we uh, argue, we're, we always want to keep spending time with each other. We want to learn from each other, things like that. I think those were the basis for me um, writing the script. Um, I think when uh, I started to to write this or, or how I did start to write this was when I was not too long out of grad school, I had made a few shorts and I really wanted to make a feature. And I was trying to think of what resources I had at hand. I'd come out of grad school with all of these talented friends. I knew some actresses who were very talented um, that I'd worked with or ha that I'd been wanting to work with. And so I, I kind of, you know, pulled all those people mm -hmm. aside separately, grabbed a coffee and said, um, do you want to make a feature with me? And um, luckily both of the actresses said yes. And so I started fashioning these two very different characters kind of around the energies of, of the two actresses that um, had said yes to doing this. And so um, obviously they're also very different from the characters that they play, but it, it, they, they did serve as another sort of inspiration. And then, like I said, all of my, my friendships and sisterhoods throughout my life, those, um, you know, in some ways the, the story is an amalgamation of, of a lot of those different relationships. Uh, these two characters uh go through very uh, go th go through a friendship very quickly uh you know there's a lot going on with them there's a lot of themes that they start talking about while writing this uh was it very cathartic for you well, you know did, did it take a lot of introversion or, in order to create a story that is so so human and so grounded uh yes it it did um uh, it's always like weird to think about the process. I feel like it's different for every um, everything that you write. For this, I think, like I said, I had the two kind of mm -hmm. um, women who were inspirations for me as uh, that would embody these characters. And so with that, thinking about all of the different friendships that I've had, but also that I've seen other people have. And um, I, I was thinking about all of those things and then just the the journey of a lot of, uh, friendships, relationships, you kind of go through that, um, uh, you know, meeting a stranger and mm -hmm. it being kind of awkward because you don't really understand each other. And then, and then realizing, oh, you kind of enjoy their company or they kind of um, see something human in you or you see something very human in them. And, um, you know, you start to laugh together. So I was kind of looking at all of these different um, phases that we go through, we cycle through in our relationships. Mm -hmm. And so, with all, I think I'd written all of those down, jotted those different phases down and, and how I might want to play that out. And um, so I created a, a, a loose structure in that sort of way of, of how I would want um, the, the arc of the film, the friendship to be. Mm -hmm. And then with that in mind, I think I just kind of let them talk on the page. And so um, I, I think it is probably one of the, the fastest first drafts I've written of something because after I kind of had that structural um, framework set up, then I was just like writing. Um, and then from there, I after I did have the first draft, I sent it to the actresses and there might be some scenes that I wanted to play out some more. And so then I would kind of... Um, take that scene and ask them to play it out beyond what was on the page sometimes. And, and then the, the story might develop even more from there. I would take tidbits that had, that would maybe emerge from, from those conversations and, and improv. That's awesome. Um, these, the, the, the friendship that grows between these women are, is the central story, but you have, uh, you have it affect a lot of the other relationships that these women are going through, whether it's a romantic relationship or the relationship between uh, the the main character and her her deceased mom. 
uh how how crucial was it uh, actually how difficult was it for you to to get those different emotions down because they all seem so distinct uh, in the way that they that they're thrown on screen Well, I think that all of our relationships do affect our other relationships too. And, and I think that oftentimes when we are meeting different people in our lives, throughout our lives, they, they have an effect on the way that we think generally sometimes. And so, I mean, I think maybe because I've moved around a fair amount throughout my life. I was born in the U.S., but then moved to Korea when I was nine years old, moved back to the U.S., and then moved to a different part of the U.S., and then went and lived in, you know, Italy for half a year, and then went to live in Cambodia for half a year. You know, just every time that you move and you start meeting people who have had vastly different life experiences from you, but you're still all human. And so you start to recognize things that are, um, that you share, but then also a very different way of, of looking at the world or living the world. And so I think I was definitely um, taking some of that as well. And because I think, um, uh, for example, you're talking about one of my characters who has a, um, a change in relationship with her mother who has already mm -hmm. passed when the film starts. And so Um, even for things like that, I, I feel like, you know, she, sometimes we're kind of like stuck in a cycle of, of thinking about a certain thing in our life, but then somebody comes along who probably has had their own life experiences, whether it's with their parents or their, the people in their community, um, and they approach the world in a very different way. Uh, I think it starts to help you readjust the way that you think sometimes for the better you know there's also sometimes for the worst but luckily for for these two characters i think that um in a in a certain way they they both um were able to kind of illuminate a different way of looking at their own worlds um through their their conversations definitely and a little bit more on the technical side uh the feel of the film when it comes to the cinematography is very different in the beginning as it is as it goes through to the end uh what kind of conversations did you have with your cinematographer in order to get that kind of standoffish feel in the beginning with the very long shots and the more intimate feel when you go in, in closer towards the end and get a lot more intimate with the close-ups Yeah, well, that was both very intentional, but also um, circumstantial because we, so to, to actually give you a little bit more on the background of how this film was made, um, the, the original uh, draft that I had written for us to go into shoot, the original shooting draft actually, was all meant to take place in the course of a day. And so these two characters meet and, um, and a friendship evolves throughout the course of a day, uh, mostly in that one location. And that was actually all shot prior to the pandemic. So mm -hmm. we we were um, planning to have that be the film, but then um, when uh, like the towards the end of 2019, we shot early 2019, we were supposed to finish by 20, end of 2019. And I was realizing that there were a couple scenes that I really needed to reshoot. And mm -hmm. so then, We were planning to do that hopefully in 2020. And then of course the pandemic hit. And so we weren't able to do that. And so then we uh, put the film aside for a couple of years and all went about our own lives. And then when uh, we were thinking, okay, let's come back and finish this film when uh, the world was getting a little bit safer, mm -hmm. then it felt like, oh, this is a movie from 2019 because it's literally a, a day encapsulated. And I think we all were in such a different frame of mind. And so, Um, instead of doing the reshoot, I wrote new present day scenes for three years later. And so we obviously had to change the ending as well, because originally it all uh, resolves um, at that the end of the day. But um, there's uh, a certain um, event. And then basically, we end up jumping uh, three years later. And so we start in present day, three years later. And then there's a moment that we jump back three years ago. And that's actually the way that we shot it because of the pandemic and how we had to kind of reimagine the story three years later. And I think it actually 
helped the film in a lot of ways. Obviously, the pandemic was a terrible world tragedy, but um, but we, you know, got the best of of what we could for this film, and I think it was it's better for it. And so, even when we were thinking about shooting three years later, um, it was definitely a decision of okay, let's let's make it feel different. Let's make it feel. Um, uh because three years ago as you said is a very kind of intimate look at these two women mm-hmm. both separately and together as they start to learn more about each other and their their self themselves um in that period and and then three years later is also different the other thing that helped that was that i had two separate um cinematographers and so mm-hmm. my cinematographer hitin who shot it uh originally she was a great grad school friend um and uh and then she actually went and started doing these big uh films um in korea as well so she's doing very well and um but then three years later she was not able to come back to the u.s to shoot the rest of it and so then we obviously went on a search for a new dp and um and then luckily we had dawn we found dawn who is also incredible and so it was a discussion with Don then of, of how we might make this feel different, but obviously they are also two different artists themselves. And so I think that um, was actually good for the film in a lot of ways too. Definitely. It definitely gave a, a, a complete story arc there just on, on the camera work on its own. Um, for you now, you know, you took this really long journey in creating this film, which is incredible. What is, what is the feeling now that you're getting to show it in theaters for people to watch? Very exciting. I think this whole year we've been in a few festivals and it's the most rewarding thing. I think when you're, I usually kind of hide in the back of the theater if I'm there and, um, and kind of just observe the audience reactions and it is very exciting when you you hear people you know laugh or cry in places that you didn't expect them to and so um i think that's been super rewarding and then um and then now we're even having the theatrical run at the lemley in north hollywood um next week next friday actually that we open for a week and Mm -hmm. uh, and i mean actually the reason why we're able to do that even is because one of the festivals that we were in a few months ago, there was um, an audience member who, I mean, it was a packed theater in San Francisco, How uh, and we were very surprised because we don't know very many people in San Francisco, but I think that was was CAMFest. Um, and I think the, the local San Francisco Bay Area community just really loves that festival. It's it's one with like a 40 some year history. Mm-hmm. And um, and so our theater was pretty packed and um, and people were coming up to us after the film and, and telling us how they had felt. And um, and one of the people we realized was a, um, a co-founder of Rotten Tomatoes. Mm-hmm. Um, and he originally was just was, you know, wanting to connect us with anybody that might be able to help us and things like that but we kept on chatting and um eventually he wanted to sponsor a whole another san francisco screening for us um and has helped us you know find some more sponsors and whatnot to be able to do this whole awards qualifying theatrical run in um november so Mm -hmm. um i think festivals are clearly a great way to meet people you have no idea who might end up watching your film and Mm -hmm. and becoming a real champion for it so it's yeah, I think just that type of um, response of, of meeting people who really connect to your film is is such an honor. Definitely, uh, that's an incredible story and so on as well. Um, now that you know you're getting getting the theatrical run, uh, even though this story is complete and it's very it has a very satisfying ending. Uh, is there any thought in what projects you have up next? Is there going to be a sequel or or are you going uh, <laughs> to a whole different uh, story? I don't know that there's going to be a sequel, although sometimes my actresses and I have joked about it and, uh, you know, like who knows the future, but, mm-hmm. um, but I mean, these characters I hope will continue to live on and um, on different screens of people. We hope to get distribution. And so, uh, we're still working on that um, wider distribution on a on a streamer, hopefully. But um, uh, in, yeah, and I mean, in terms of my next projects, I hope to continue to make films um, 
on and on for the rest of my life. And so this is my my first feature film. And so I I would love to keep growing and um and explore more stories about about people. Um wow. but yes, please do come see the film in um November, November 15th through the 21st. Mm -hmm. Uh we'll have four screenings a day at the Lemley Noho 7. And um, Q and A is at least for the first three nights. Um, it may be more throughout the week. So the fifteenth, sixteenth, seventeenth, after the seven thirty PM screening, we'll definitely have Q and As. And so, um, hopefully, we'll see a lot of people out there. Hopefully, well, congratulations! Uh, this film is fantastic. I enjoyed the watch, and thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jesus.